Greetings and welcome once again to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and today I'm going to be talking about a follow-up topic on my previous video which was on the drivel that you find in the theory of limits. So what I'm going to explain to you today is how mainstream teaches incorrectly the theory of numbers and how you can understand number correctly for the first time. So let me begin. Now, if you do a search on Google, what is a real number in mathematics? The first thing you'll notice is this drivel that comes up. Okay. And of course, the big influences behind this here are a group of 40 French idiots called the Bourbaki group. Okay. And uh, I think involved with them may have been also a pathetic Greek academic called George Carathéodory. I don't know if that's his actual name or his complete name, but he was also an idiot. And most mainstream Greek academics today are absolute morons, just like their Western counterparts. So, um, not understanding what Euclid was attempting to do, they not only went off course, but they went off course in a big way. And I'm saying at the speed, at several times the speed of light, the morons just lost direction. Okay. They have no idea what is a number. They have no idea what mathematics is. And they're teaching this drivel for the last 150 to 200 years. So how do they see mathematics and numbers. Now, in a previous channel, in a previous video, sorry, I talked about the very definition of limits, which is flawed from start to finish, and how your educate, educators are a bunch of ignorant morons. And I'm encouraged to see that at least 34 people liked it. That's a big improvement on previous videos. So go ahead, click like on that video, and subscribe. Now, how do they define numbers? Well, they've got a little circle here saying something about numbers. I don't know. Natural numbers? Yeah, I think that's natural numbers. Now, what the hell is a natural number? By the way, um, Euclid wrote six books, six books of the elements in that, in that order, one, two, three, four, five, six, before he even touched on the topic of number. Okay. The topic of number begins in Book 7 of Euclid. So there's a whole lot of machinery that goes into the construction of these numbers here. And number doesn't come before ratio, by the way. The first thing that happens is that you have a ratio of magnitudes. Magnitude can be a length, a mass, a volume, anything that can be quantified, but hasn't been quantified. Okay, Because a magnitude is not a number. Okay, it's just a concept of size, dimension, or extent. So it took the ancient Greeks quite a bit of elbow grease to develop the first numbers, natural numbers. But as you'll see here, the utter morons of mainstream academia have several layers that form on this layer, which they don't understand. This little blue circle that you see here is, has machinery that goes into it, which determines everything that you'll know about number. Everything, including this orange circle, okay? So the whole numbers are just simply the natural numbers plus zero. But what is, what is a number? And of course, integers include uh, numbers that indicate a deficiency or a lack or something that you don't have. And by the way, rational numbers are redundant because every number is a rational number, even the natural numbers, even the whole numbers, even the integers, they're all rational numbers. So this that theoretic idea came from the Bourbaki morons, as I, as I like to call them, okay, who didn't understand what Euclid was trying to do, didn't understand the elements, and everything that they didn't understand, they called an action, <laughs> which means a belief. Okay. Now, belief is not necessary in mathematics at all. 
So why is it important to know what a number is? Well, because mathematics is the abstract science of measure and number. And you cannot do mathematics without that most important concept. What is it called? Number. Okay. So to help you along this, I have written many articles, produced many videos. But what I'd like to introduce right now is the realization and development of number in one page. What is a number exactly? And I tell you that in one page, people. Okay, so here it is. You begin with the concept of size, dimension, or extent, which is a magnitude. <clears throat> From that, you arrive at the idea of ratio. I mean, you can't do anything with a magnitude by itself. In fact, you can't even talk about it unless you... Uh, compare it to some other magnitude which you know of, okay? And so you end up with a little ratio. In other words, you compare two magnitudes. One is an antecedent, the other is a consequent. Then you get the idea, after you've done this a few times, that you can form a standard or a unit. And so you define a unit as a ratio of equal magnitudes. It could be any, any magnitude you like. It doesn't have to be a particular size magnitude because as you'll see later on in step five actually even yeah in step five but a little earlier we move away from the actual size of the unit we begin to consider numbers in terms of the abstract unit but step four is where a crucial thing happens uh, in definition three of book five there is a Greek word called pilikotita, and there is no English word for it. And in fact, even the mainstream moronic Greeks of today don't understand that word. So if you tell a Greek pilikotita, he'll think it has something to do with clay or quotient, but he won't understand it in the way that I'm about to explain to you now. So what did Euclid mean when he defined ratio in book three? This is what he meant. He said that if you can measure the different parts of a given ratio, the antecedent and the consequent, with the same magnitude, with the same magnitude, then that ratio has the property of quotientness. Okay. In other words, and what do we mean by measure? We mean if that magnitude fits exactly, because at this time you don't have number. So you literally take the unit that you defined, and you see if it fits exactly into both of these uh, ratio parts, the uh, consequent and the antecedent. And if it does, you say, wow, it has quotientness. Now, in the next step, we define special kinds of numbers, which we call the, the natural numbers. In other words, the counting numbers. And we say that uh, one is the, the, the measure of this ratio, where the antecedent is equal to the consequent. Two is the measure of this ratio where the antecedent is a multiple of the consequent. And all these natural numbers are multiples of this consequent. Okay, so now you have natural numbers. And now we move over to fractions. Okay, so fractions are just simply uh, numbers where one is a natural number and we call that the numerator and the denominator the denominator is a unit which we've defined as our standard of measure and that is the abstraction of number completely from uh, from a concept of magnitude to a complete measure so what on earth is a ratio without measure well it's a ratio which doesn't have quotientness you see so if you try to measure the circumference of a circle, as you see down here, with its diameter, you can't because there is no magnitude that fits into both these parts exa exactly. Same thing happens with the diagonal of a square. So a lot of work went into the machinery of numbers, not just the little circles, little circle drivel that your mainstream math professor shows you over here and thinks he's very smart and gives you a test on it and says, okay, what, which number falls into which little circle set here? Because they think of things in terms of set, which is a completely flawed theory, which has 
absolutely zero to do with mathematics because set theory is not mathematics. It's anti-mathematical rot. And they'll drill you with this uh, bullshit until you finally brainwashed and believe that there is such a thing as a real number and an irrational number. There isn't. Okay, there isn't anything beyond the rational numbers does not exist unless it's out of their sewer brains. Okay. Then they will tell you, oh, we've come a long way in the last, <laughs> the last 200 years or last thousand. They haven't. They haven't even improved one iota on what the ancient Greeks did. And in this article called On Didic and Cuts, I show you why Didic and Cuts and Cauchy's equivalence sequences, Cauchy equivalence sequences are a bunch of bullshit. Okay. So you need to study it carefully and you'll see that what I'm telling you shows you have no valid definition of irrational number or real number. Those are mythical concepts. And you'll say, well, we've sent men to the moon with it. No, you haven't, you moron. We've never used anything but rational numbers in any STEM field. Did you get that? Yes, even in electrical engineering, you do not use complex numbers. They don't exist. You use trigonometric series, which give you the results that you want by storing more than one bit of information in a number. It, well, not a number, in an object, a mathematical object. But those parts are not real parts. They're rational parts. Okay, So you've never, ever seen or dealt with or touched a real number. Pi is not even a number. Square root 2 is not even a number. Okay, Then you have this mythical object called a number line. Now, not only is there no real number line, there is no rational number line. Because what does it mean to reify a number line? Okay, reify means to construct. It means you need to do three things. Pay attention, moron. Set up straight if you're a mathematics professor because you need to pay attention, you idiot. Part A, you need to construct the line segments. And imagine me smacking you on top of the head with a big cane if you're a math professor or a calculus professor. You construct the line segments first. Then you assign the markers as in calibration, okay? And then you provide a measure for each marker. You cannot do that for anything but a natural number line. There is nothing beyond the natural number line. You cannot produce a rational number line, you idiot, because you cannot uh, construct B, you, know, you cannot perform B and C, okay? You can maybe perform, you cannot even perform A. You can perform none of these on the rational numbers. In other words, numbers that are not multiples of the unit. So the only number line you can construct really is a natural number line. There's nothing beyond that. And you should not think of numbers in terms of number lines because that basically lead you down the wrong path where you do not understand what the number is. So how do you get to understand number? You study this one page realization. I'll give you a link to, don't worry. You don't have to write down anything right now. Just pay attention. I'll, I'll give you a link to this and you will study it and you will see that what I'm telling you is correct. And as a tribute to my late mother, I also did this in Greek because to be honest with you, Greek morons, are no different from any other morons. So, um, <clears throat> study this article. And then also I've created a lovely, a lovely page, a free web page. I call it Index to My Academia, Index to My Academia Articles. It's much easier to just load this up. And then if you click on it, <clears throat> it should show you all the articles that I've written, okay? Unfortunately, it shows you all the other crap too from academia. So you'll see all of this posted up. Okay. It's all here. And you'll see the posts as well as the, the uh, titles of the books. You just do a search and you can say control F like that. And you can look for all the data can cuts. Well, I think you'll have to download this first before you can do a search on it. Somehow academia doesn't allow you to use a control F function.
Okay, or well, there's some other reason why it's not working. But everything is in here, and you can just search this, and it's right there for your use. So, there is no such thing as a real number, okay? It doesn't exist. It's a bogus concept. We've never used real numbers. <laughs> and these little circles here are just juvenile, idiotic concepts that arose from the use of sets which came from the father of all mathematical cranks, George Hilbert and his devoted moronic apostle, David Hilberg and Frege and all those ultimate morons, okay, who I, I call the ultimate morons. So Cantor was not a mathematician. He was not even a mathematician's anus, just like most of you are not a mathematician's anus. And I I have to state that because you need to know your place, okay? If, uh, I'm talking to math professors and math teachers. So please, you're anuses. You're not mathematicians. Your PhDs don't mean shit. They're just long essays filled with lots of errors, with lots of drivel. And I know you got brown tongue from uh, being up your advisor's asses. So... That's just too bad. But anyway, that's pretty much it. <clears throat> if you're not already a subscriber to my channel, become a subscriber, click like, follow me on academia.edu because I'm constantly posting new content there, writing new articles. And also support me on my, support me by buying my Kindle books, okay? So here you go. <clears throat> I have, that's wrong. Didn't mean to go there, I meant to go here. Okay. So <clears throat> I've written quite a few books. This book here is very important, by the way. If you want to understand mathematics, you need to buy this book. Okay. <clears throat> and why is it so important? Because it puts all the concepts into the correct sequence. Okay. It tells you <clears throat> exactly what <clears throat> is meant by measure and division, and how they're all integrated together. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> that's pretty much all I have to say for this video. Um, I'll try to be in touch with you as soon as I can soon. I'm John Gabriel. This is a new calculus channel. Until next time, goodbye.